Uh, oh, oh, who am I kidding? You guys think I actually know how to knit? Hi, how's it going? Uh, welcome to another uh, exciting episode of CMH's Virtual Heli Huddles. Coming to you live from a very windy and stormy Invermere, British Columbia today. Uh, I want to start off with uh, some shout outs from all of our guests across the virtual world. Um, let's see, I see uh, Derek in Glasgow, Greg, hi from Sarajevo, Michael from Toronto, uh, Nora from St. Moritz, I've got Heather from Great Lake Huron, cool, Simon in London wants to be at the Gothics, Nicholas from Montreal, and Nicole from California. Awesome. Thanks for joining you guys. Well, I'd like to take uh, a moment and introduce my co-host, Allie. Allie is our employee experience manager and is the perfect person to onboard our newest team members that we hire. Allie has been with us for seven years now, and fun fact, she is big into paddleboarding. Well, I just started last summer, but I love it. So now it's my pleasure to introduce my co-host Brody. He is a certified hike and ski guide and is also the assistant area manager at our Bugaboo Lodge. He's been with CMH for nine years now. And fun fact, on top of knitting, Brody is also big into whitewater rafting. But I don't knit while whitewater rafting. That's really hard to do. So uh, on set with us today, we have two new panelists. I'd like to welcome Craig. 24 year guide and area manager of our adamants operation. I'd also like to welcome Matt, 30 year guide and assistant area manager at our Kootenai operation. Welcome gents. Well, look at this, we're all wearing red, the color of safety, what a coincidence. Mercedes, Alex, and Steve will be joining us off camera to support the online Q&A. They'll be answering your questions as they come in, so feel free to get in touch with them throughout. We will also be answering some of your questions during the Q&A at the end of the event. And just like previous episodes, we will be asking you a skill testing question based on information in today's huddle. So from our friends at Smith, we will be giving away a pair of 4D mag goggles. To give you the best possible read on terrain, these goggles give sharp optics and an unbelievably wide field of view. And they're also the most beautiful goggles that I have ever held. So keep your eyes and ears peeled because one of you will be the winner. Super sweet giveaway today, awesome. Okay, so based on the theme of today's heli huddle, which is snow safety at CMH, Ali and I are going to speak to one of our company's core values. Yes, so CMH has six core values which guide all company decisions and the value that we'll be highlighting today is obviously safety, which is our operational cornerstone. So we strive to lead the industry with our practices and protocols and we're here today to share some insights into our elaborate safety program. That's right, so as we've discussed in one of our previous huddles, it takes years of time, energy and commitment to become a guide or a pilot that works with us here at CMH. Beyond that previous training and experience, CMH and Alpine conduct our own in-house trainings, both for new staff and as well yearly updates for our returning teams. We take our training very seriously here. So let's see some of that safety training in action. Roll that clip. Heli skiing unbelievable it isn't just the skiing it's the whole package it's landing on the top of a mountain with just a few people and looking out and you're alone in the Canadian wilderness and then you have one of the best runs of your life CMH is always striving to do things the safest way that they can. It's the greatest job there is to be out there, but it comes with a huge responsibility. You 
We move in complex mountain terrain and we move often people who have very little experience in the mountains. So you actually have to chop some blocks. Safety is an all-encompassing theme within CMH. It's the core of our values. It all starts with our guides. They're all certified through either Association of Canadian Mountain Guides or one of the member countries of the International Federation of Mountain Guides Association. Lots of us have been working for 20 plus years. The average time of uh, guiding in the company is like 14 years. We've got centuries of institutional knowledge and experience on how to do heli skiing. It's not good enough to just take people out into the mountains and show them the best day of their life. We have to bring them home. CMH has a whole SO Safety program, which is the only operator that actually has a separate helicopter and guides just to go out into the field and check out the avalanche conditions. When the hazard is high, we manage it by sticking to safe terrain. And a big part of it too is uh, the runs that we've created through our run development program. And the run development program is a huge part of both the safety and the experience of our guests. Every year it's a multi-million dollar investment where we have crews out there just clearing out the brush and the small trees in the forest uh, so that it creates good terrain that we can safely ski when the avalanche hazard is high. In addition to the uh, observations that each of the guides are making when they're out skiing with the groups, we always have at least one guide who fills the role of the snow safety guide and uh, do snowpack observations, dig snow profiles, check conditions on the run, and this additional input really factors into our decisions for the next day as to where we can go skiing as well. CMH is the only vertically oriented company, basically meaning that CMH owns the helicopters. The maintenance is unbelievable. We actually own a facility that makes helicopter parts as well. So if you pull off you know, any of the things in the helicopter and look in, it looks like it just came off the assembly line yesterday. Most of our pilots are doing you know, 140 landings a day, hundreds of uh, days in a year. When we bring new pilots into our system, into the company, we work really hard at finding the right people. They need to be very qualified to start with, even before they can come in to an entry-level position. So they've got years of experience, thousands of hours. We're setting the bar high and we want our standards to be high, and everybody realizes that it's a, it's a team effort to keep everybody safe. Heli skiing with CMH is the safest way that you can experience this unbelievable way to travel through the mountains. Okay, so now I'm feeling safe and stoked, but I want to delve deeper into these safety concepts. So to do that, we're going to bring Craig and Matt onto the screen. Okay, so Matt, I, uh, I met you in around 2004 before I became a guide, and uh, both you and Craig were actually examiners on my apprentice ski guide exam. But uh, Matt, why don't you tell the viewers how you first met Craig? Uh, sure. Uh, Craig and I met uh, as we were both working through the Mountain Guide certification process. And we we're uh, going back and forth. I think you know, we came up with 2002. Uh, so we shared some training courses and exams and definitely some funny stories and some significant laughs through that time. So been a journey. Yeah. <laughs> the beginning of a lifelong friendship. Well, mm. Craig and Matt, <laughs> some of the folks joining us today are new to the idea of heli skiing. Can you tell us about some of the safety equipment that's provided at CMH and the training our guests receive when they join us for a heli ski trip? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Allie. Um, so before heading out into the mountains, the guides and pilots run a safety training for our guests. So 
Every person in the field carries the necessary equipment to respond to an emergency, and then we practice our response with all that gear. Uh, an avalanche transceiver is used to locate where someone is buried in the snow. An avalanche probe is what actually finds the person. And then using lightweight shovels, we can dig them out. And it's really cool uh, to see returning guests improving in these rescue practices year after year. And it actually gives me quite a bit of faith in the training that we do with our folks. And uh, when I'm looking at this training, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about creating my heli skiing team. Uh, so the team relies on the pilot to get us to the right places and then the guide to lead uh, the way down the mountain. And then we rely on the team to follow the program as it's presented. So a great day of heli skiing is 100% uh, a team effort. Uh, Craig, why don't we delve a bit deeper into the gear uh, that we use and a bit about how it's evolved? Yeah, for sure, Matt. So obviously, uh, an avalanche transceiver is a really important piece of uh, safety equipment. You can see on the screen here, uh, Bariavox S transceiver. That's the current model we use. And Mammut and Bariavox, they're major designers and innovators in the avalanche rescue equipment industry. And CMH has actually been working with these guys now for 20 years. And through that time, we've developed an excellent working relationship. Mm. So with this new Bariavox S transceiver, we've provided them with valuable feedback so that they can fine tune that firmware that actually drives these units. It's just another way that CMH is helping to innovate the heli ski and the backcountry industry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's super cool, Craig. Um, why don't you uh, tell us about the new heli skiing specific avalanche flotation device that CMH worked with uh, Memo to uh, produce? Yeah, for sure, Brody. So um, an avalanche flotation device is, uh, or an AFD as it's called, is a backpack with a deployable balloon inside. And you can see the pack here, Matt Scott, he was actually uh, you know, one of the people that helped design this. And so what happens is if you were caught in an avalanche, you can deploy this balloon, which would increase this, the person's overall volume, and they, it may give them a higher likelihood of uh, remaining on the surface. So previously, we've had a variety of different packs from different manufacturers that were available to us, but none of them really worked for us. So again, we approached Mammut, we collaborated with them, and they made us this amazing bag. Yeah, small and simple. That was the goal. And we want straps that are color-coded and uh, buckles that are easier to use with gloves on because our guests don't uh, need to carry much with them other than the necessities we really tried to slim uh, the the design down to only the essentials and pretty psyched on this well it's a good looking pack matt uh, and i actually didn't realize how involved cmh has been with safety innovations within the industry so that's neat to hear about well, since these types of items are used as a just-in-case optional safety precaution, what specific things do you guys do as guides to keep us safe in the mountains? Yeah, that's a, a really good point, Ali. So, you know, the safety equipment is just for the just-in-case, but we want to travel safely through the mountains. So when I'm out there, I like to practice uh, a few things. First, I try to stay high in the terrain. So low spots, gullies, creeks, these are all places you could get hung up in. And the shape of this terrain also promotes if snow starts to uh, move, it would pile up. So we call these terrain traps and I try to always avoid them. Another significant hazard we might not see is tree wells. Matt, why don't you go for this one? Yeah, for sure. So uh, as the snow falls and deepens through the winter, the areas right around the trunks of trees, they fill in a bit less and it you can create or that creates an unconsolidated space and it's actually possible to fall into that space. Uh, we coach our teams to ski in partners when we're in the forest so that uh, you can keep track of one another and we want to give the trees lots of space. It, uh, it might sound silly, but I like to tell my folks to aim for the white not the green okay so high in the terrain and in the white spots between the green spots check mm -hmm. got it um 
Well, I know that's not the only way we keep our guests safe. So uh, can you two describe the other pieces of our thousand piece uh, safety puzzle for them? Yeah, for sure, Brody. So a critical piece of the, the CMH safety puzzle is the snow safety program. So every CMH area has one or two dedicated snow safety guides that actually use their own helicopter to go out and investigate areas that the team has uncertainty in or where the team may want to find out more about the snowpack. So this team operates separately from the heliski groups, but in support of that program. And this concept was born back in the 80s from recognizing that we needed more snowpack information to go out into these areas and that we needed an extra guide. So by uh, I think it was 1991, 92, uh, we officially had like a snow safety role. Uh, also, soon after this, we developed our own in-house program, uh, computer program called Snowbase. And this helps us record those observations and it helps us streamline and structure our guides meetings. So what does it mean to support the ski program? Matt, you again. All right. Uh, if at the whole foundation of the CMH processes lie uh, our guides meetings. So every morning and evening, the operational team, so that's the guides and the pilots, we meet to plan and then subsequently debrief the day. Uh, so we'll get started here in the morning. Um, we look at weather changes overnight, forecast for the day, uh, and we're trying to determine what is changing from the previous day's observations. And ultimately the question we're trying to answer is uh, what uh, will the conditions be like today? Uh, so from this conversation, we create a run list in Snowbase. So you can see that up on the screen there. Uh, so we code every run as either green, yellow, or red. So green runs are open to guiding. Uh, yellow runs have some specific criterion that requires investigation. Red runs are closed. And uh, this is a collaborative process. Anyone in the room uh, has a veto, and regardless of their experience or certification, and then through this whole process, we identify our knowledge gaps, and that creates the framing for the snow safety program. Yeah, Matt. You know, we can we can divide these knowledge gaps loosely into two categories. Mm -hmm. We got geography, and we got snow science. Uh, of course, there's going to be overlap, but we're talking about the big picture here. So geographical knowledge gaps means we haven't been into an area for a long time. Mm -hmm. So those always green or always open runs, they might be in question and it might not be for the snowpack. It might just be for ski quality too. Mm -hmm. So our 10 years, they're so big that conditions can you know, dramatically vary from one area to another. So before getting the whole program going and doing all these big flights out to the far reaches, it's worthwhile sending out the snow safety team to see if the conditions are favorable. Man, I like to think of this as the, uh, the snow safety probe. Right on. Yeah. It's so fun to, to work in that context when you get to fly out to the far reaches as this, as the probe, great times. Um, yeah. the, uh, the second knowledge gap relates more to snowpack evaluation. So when we need to understand more about what's happening between the layers in the snowpack, we directly investigate those interfaces with our skis, shovels, and sometimes even with explosives. And here you can see a, a bit of a snow profile in, uh, in action there. Within this, the run list framework that CMH has created, we will not open red runs during the ski day because we really want to remove that sort of human bias factor. So without having the pressure of a group of guests, the snow safety team can spend the time to really learn what is happening in the snowpack. And that way we can make the most informed decisions about where we can ski. Right from the very first snowfalls in the autumn, we're tracking the layering within the snowpack. And we often dig uh, these snow profiles to assess what's happening with the layers. So we look at the crystals that form the layers and then how dense the layers are. And then ultimately we test the layering to see how well they stick to one another. And here's a little clip of what that, uh, some of those tests look like. Roll it.
That's great. A couple of the standardized tests there. You know, snow is is incredibly dynamic. I mean, you can actually get uh, a, a PhD in snow science, and uh, every guide out uh, out in the field goes through the avalanche forecaster training by the Canadian Avalanche Association. It's actually a prerequisite to starting the guide certification process. And that, uh, that allows us to sort of evaluate and discuss the snowpack with the same tests and using the same language. Matt, does this mean I could tell uh, my mom that I'm a doctor? No. No? Uh, yeah, so like you said, one of the most enthusiastic investigations we can do is with explosives. And this tactic's usually used to control terrain that actually would threaten what we ski or ride or the pickups and landings we want to use for the helicopter. And so all the CMH blasters are trained and certified through the Canadian Avalanche Association and WorkSafe BC. And this is to the same standards as the folks that actually keep the highway and the railways open. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so with we have all this investigation going on, and we, there's a constant stream of communication uh, between the leading guides and then the snow safety guides. As we learn more about the conditions, we're feeding that information to the ski program, and that helps to fine tune the guiding decisions. And then we also have a face to face meeting with all the guides in the middle of the day, and that coincides with lunch. So the snow safety helicopter delivers lunch to a predetermined spot. The snow safety guide sets up this sort of lunch extravaganza. And uh, we'll take a quick look at that. You don't think these snow tables just build themselves out there, hey? Check it out. Brody does a pretty good job there. I might have to hire him. That's it's adequate. It's adequate. Adequate. So yeah, at the end of the day, all of the information compiled in the field gets put into Snowbase for the evening guides meeting. And this again is Snowbase, um, our in-house program. You can see on the screen. So snow profiles are graphed, run check forms are filled out, and snowpack test results are all cataloged. This new information is shared in the guides meeting at the end of the day so that we can all end up in the same page with the changing conditions. After the evening guides meeting, we all have a conference call with all the other CMH areas where we can share our critical information and observations. And th this call is pretty critical. It helps us understand the big picture of what's not just going on in our own area, but across the whole range. So to wrap up the day, CMH then shares its information with Avalanche Canada's forecasters to help create the public avalanche bulletin that gets used for recreational users. Well, Craig and Matt, I feel like I would confidently trust you with Brody's firstborn child. That is how safe all of this sounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for sharing all of that critical information so we can understand what goes into making our ski dreams come true each day. And thank goodness I don't have any kids, so uh, there you go. <laughs> All right, gang, well, uh, it's time to test the listening skills of the viewers out there, and we are going to go with this uh, week's skill testing question. So here it is, if you're ready. What three colors do we use when coding our run list? Again, what three colors do we use when coding our run list? So get on the live chat. Throw in your answers for your chance to win some Smith 40 Mag goggles. And now a word from our sponsors. With their quick and easy lens change technology, these are the only goggles you'll need in all conditions. Okay, so uh, in the last episodes, we've noticed that uh, how your comments post on your screen uh, is different from how they post on our screen. So in order to give everyone a fair chance, we are going to take the names of the people who have answered correctly in the chat and put them in a hat for Allie to draw from. So while we're waiting for the responses and converting your digital answers to analog on paper, we're going to bring Craig and Matt back on for our rapid fire questions. I think we're all feeling ready for this. So here we go. Craig, what is your favorite CMH Lodge? 
Oh, good question. Uh, of course, I want to be biased and say the adamants. It's quite special to me. But the truth is I've skied all the areas and they all have excellent skiing and amazing products. So I, I don't have a favorite. Very neutral answer. Thank you. And for you, Matt? I am uh, comfortable with my bias. <laughs> I'm going to say Kootenai, CMH Kootenai, all the way. All right. <laughs> and Craig, what is your favorite CMH meal? Oh, I'm a simple person. I, I love just a good steak and potato dinner. Similar to Rocco from one of our previous episodes. Uh, and for you, Matt, what's your favorite CMH meal? Um, we had like a, I'm going to call it like a unicorn experience, a one-time experience where we had a all-you-can-eat crab leg fiasco fiesta, depending on how you <laughs> look at it. Um, it was spectacular. It's not something I would ever want to recreate, um, but that definitely goes down in the, in the books as a pretty special meal. Had a bit too much, perhaps. It was maybe a bit aggressive. But. <laughs> <laughs> and for our final rapid fire question, um, Craig, what does CMH mean for you? Oh, I'd, I'd have to say professionalism and family. Um, you know, I was quoted years, well, actually my first year that I started with the company is saying I was going to work for six weeks and move on to something better. And it's been almost 20 years now. So I never moved on because I never found anything better. And a lot of that is the family, whether it's, you know, that, that unique relationship between guests and staff, it's uh, pretty awesome. That's great. Thank you. And uh, for you, Matt, what does CMH mean for you? Um, I, I, it's in that sort of family vein as well. Like I, I came, I worked in a variety of other operations before I came to CMH and, um, and, you know, CMH really has these Sort of family values and i'm not gonna lie like i was a bit skeptical when i first uh, signed on but i just i didn't think that that uh that they would or we would uh kind of walk the talk and you know what i was fully proved wrong the family piece is really impressive between uh you know the relationship that we have with our guests and then um you know the sort of the the team within the staff it's it's uh it's pretty special actually Amazing. And you've got a lifelong friendship with Craig and Brody. So what more can you ask for? Hey, mm, there's a few things to ask for, but <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig and Matt, thank you so much for those answers and for joining us on today's huddle. Now it's time to pass things back over to Brody for the giveaway. Geez, Matt, you know, I thought we were all like stepbrothers and we were going to go build bunk beds together or something, but I guess not. So, um, well, we've reviewed and compiled the correct responses from the chat, and we've put them on paper for the draw. So again, the question was, what three colors do we use when coding our run list? And the answers uh, were, in any order, green, yellow, and red. So Allie, why don't you draw that name out of the hat? Okay, well, our production assistant, Bailey, just passed everything over, so... Our winner is G Smith is the name. So G Smith, congratulations. We'll uh, connect with you to get your shipping details. You've got lots of skiing left this winter to put these goggles to great use. So congratulations. Nice, right on. Okay, Allie, Craig, Matt, and I are gonna take a couple of minutes to answer some questions that have come up recently. So Allie, here we go. Okay. Well, it is great having everyone back on screen again. So the first question is for Matt. Do guests have to wear an avalanche flotation device backpack or is it optional? Uh, yeah, the, the AFD bags are optional. Uh, everybody in the field does carry a backpack because we need to have the rescue equipment, uh, everybody Carrying the rescue equipment, um, the AFD bags are uh, a choice uh, from from the guest standpoint if they want to uh, to carry them or not. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And then the next question is for Craig. Are guests allowed to join you in the snow safety helicopter? I have always wanted to go, but I have never been invited. Lots of people asking. Um, yeah, it, unfortunately, it's not an option. So we're using snow safety to go and check out areas that we have uncertainty 
and we wouldn't want to bring a guest to somewhere we we had uncertainty in. So answer unfortunately is no. But sometimes I'll guarantee the skiing where you are is better where the, than where the snow safety is. Okay, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's throw things over to Brody to answer things from the live chat. Awesome, thanks Allie. So I'll grab the first question here. This one comes from Kenneth. And uh, he asks, is the pack inflated with compressed air or other gas, or is it a motor inflation? Um, I'm gonna shoot that one over to Matt to answer. Uh, for sure. So that's a great question. The Mammut uh, technology uses a, a cylinder with compressed air. Um, there are other manufacturers that have different, um, you know, cylinders and fans and, and uh, you know, various other things going on. But what we are using is that, um, that sort of classic.